which means God with us. Amen. We're going to invite your attention to the Gospel according to Luke, the seventh chapter, beginning at the 36th verse. The Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter, beginning at verse number 36. If, if you can't stand, please stand as we worship, as we honor the Word of God. Luke chapter 7, beginning at verse 36. We're going to talk just a few minutes on this afternoon, and uh, we'll be right out of your way. Luke 7, 36, and it reads as follows. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who was touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owe a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii, and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave both debts. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said, Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss. But this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. Therefore I tell you, many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little Loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. You may be seated. I want to talk to you very short this afternoon about the woman who loved Jesus most. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk. God, we pray that you help your servant to decrease while you would increase. Father, hide me behind the cross right now. Oh God, I pray that the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name. Then God let no one go out the same, but change by the, power, by the power that's in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The woman who loved Jesus most. Our text begins with a Pharisee named Simon living or inviting Jesus to dinner. Jesus, unlike some of the deep folk that we know, who refused to associate with certain types of folk, took Simon up on his offer or invitation. And you even know that, listen, I don't care how deep you are, you can't reach folks staying in your house. You're going to have to venture out sometimes. You don't have to do the stuff that they do when you go there. But if you intend to reach folk, you're going to have to get outside of your comfort zone, your house. And not only did Jesus go there, but the Bible says he reclined at the table. That means he got comfortable. Are you with me here? Then a woman in town that lived a sinful life that everyone apparently knew about, and then most believed that she was a prostitute. And the text doesn't say, but that's the belief. But when, when, when she heard that Jesus was at the Pharisee's house, she decided to go there. The Bible says that she came to the house of the Pharisee, and she wasn't invited. Take note, she wasn't invited. And she had an alabaster jar of expensive perfume. 
Now on the way to the house, I can only imagine what was going through her mind. There must have been something that happened to make her realize that she was sin sick. And she couldn't do anything to change her situation. I ain't going to be too long here. And she probably tried to do something to correct her situation in other ways, but she failed. And I think about the alcoholic that goes to AA and, and the, the, uh, uh, the drug addict that goes to NA. They go faithfully and all the time, but nothing seems to change. Are you with me here? I, I, I'm not knocking these programs. They, they work for some folks, but I'm talking about somebody that's been to those programs. That's tried to get the help, but nothing happened. Are you with me here? I, I believe that this woman, that she was at a desperate time in her life, a crisis point, if you would. Some of us, I don't know, but I've been there. I don't know if y'all been there before. A crisis point, a place where you, 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 you're there, but you can't do nothing to change what you're going through. So she made up her mind to go see the man that everybody was talking about. And she brought with her some very expensive perfume. Probably the most expensive thing she had. And, and, and she brought it with her. And, and you know, when you get to that place in your life, nothing is really worth much anymore. You, you got to have been somewhere to understand what I'm talking about. When you get to the end of your rope, when you get to that place in your life, nothing seems to have any value anymore. You're hurting so bad. You don't care about the worth of anything. And the Bible says that this woman stood behind Jesus' dirty feet. In a way, they were dirty feet. He, she stood behind his feet weeping. And if you notice in the text, there wasn't no altar call. N nobody preached a sermon to, to let her know that she was a sinner. Did you, did you notice that? There wasn't no scripture quoted. No, nobody said, quoted John 3.16. There was no invitational music played. You know, we get the music playing and our motion stopped. But there wasn't no music there. This was just coming to grips with her sinful condition. And the Bible says she began to wet Jesus' feet with her tears. And, and, and then she began to wipe his feet with her precious hair. That's not something women did back then. Their hair was a precious thing. They kept the hair up and she let it down to wipe Jesus' feet. Are you with me here? And, and the Bible says that while she was doing this, she was weeping. Now when you're weeping like that, when, when you're weeping to the point where you, you're, you're pouring that much tear out, I guarantee you folk were heard her weeping. It wasn't no sign of weeping. I believe she was boo-hoo. I got with me here. Loud enough for everyone to hear she was boo-hooing. But notice she didn't have no shame about it. When, when you get to that place in your life, you're not ashamed anymore. Lord, I need your help. I, I care who sees or who knows how I feel. I need your help for this. So this woman had no shame. And the Bible says that she kissed the feet and poured out that very expensive perfume. Probably worked long and hard to get that perfume. All she had, but she poured it on the master's feet. Then Simon, who probably just got finished drinking a large glass of hatery. And didn't think he needed forgiveness on his own. Said if Jesus really was a prophet, he would know what kind of woman this was that was touching him, a sinner. My question is, who needs to touch the most? The saint or the sinner? Some folk, church folk, they put their nose up to sinners and, and they look at their situation and think they're better than them and they get all deep and holy and want to stand back. Thank God for Jesus. And then I noticed in the text that the Bible doesn't say that she went somewhere and cleaned herself up first. And then came to see Jesus. No, she came just the way she was. She was speaking of sin. And if she was a prostitute, my guess is that she was still dressed like a prostitute. Just the way she was. Then it should be noted that Simon knew this woman, and everyone knew that she was a sinner, right? Yeah. But my guess is Simon, they probably knew the woman's name, but he never referred to her by her name. He just referred to the fact that she was a sinner. Sound like church folk. Uh, yeah. uh. Then Jesus said to Simon, I got something to tell you. 
began to tell him about two people that owed a money lender some money. One owed 500 denarii, now that's about 20 months worth of wages. And the other owed him 50 denarii, about two months wages. Since neither of them had no money to pay him back, the money lender forgave both their debts. Then Jesus asked a powerful question. Yes, I knew which of the two that were forgiven their debts would love the money lender that forgave them more. And now Jesus, you got to understand, Jesus was wise. He used stories and parables that people could relate to. Now he knew fully well. Simon knew the punishment for not being able to pay your debt. Yo, 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 those money lenders would lock you up. They would take your children. They would beat you. You would be in prison for life. That's why he chose the story. So Simon answered this, well, the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. Jesus told him, you have judged correctly. He turned to the woman and said to Simon, who apparently didn't appreciate Jesus or realize who he really was. He said, do you see this woman? Firstly, I came into your house. You didn't give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gotta understand something. There's tears. Did you know tears are priceless? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Tell me the store you can go and buy some tears. That's right. That's right. That's you can't buy tears. Priceless. That's right. and secondly, he said, you didn't give me a kiss. Mm. But this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. Uh -huh. That means she came in humility. Yes, sir. She didn't come in arrogance thinking that she was entitled to forgiveness. She came right. humble. Right. Lord, I need your hair. Are you with me here? And then thirdly, he said, you didn't pour oil on my head, but she poured perfume on my feet. Now there's something interesting in the text that the word that is translated oil here in the Greek means olive oil. See, that was the cheap stuff. And, and, and Jesus was making point or note here that you wouldn't even pour the cheap stuff on me. But this woman took the very expensive perfume and poured it on. Therefore, said I tell you, her many sins have, for me, have been forgiven. As her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. I'm about finished. The love that we have for our Master Jesus Christ. Is seen in how much we do for him. And how much we sacrifice for him. You'll notice that no one paid this woman to do anything. She took her own expensive perfume and poured it on Jesus' feet. Not only that, she gave up everything. She gave up her pride. She didn't care who saw her. She wasn't ashamed to let everyone know, listen, I need Jesus. Nobody asked her to do this. She did this from her heart. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. And, and it's interesting to note that the woman never said a word to Jesus. Uh -huh. Are y'all with me here? Uh -huh. She spoke through her tears. Yes, yes, there are times when we don't have words to utter what we're going through. Yes, but the Lord understands our tears. Oh, yes, yes. And, and, and he knows exactly where we are in life. And he knows just what we need. And, and so here's the best part of the whole thing is that Jesus never got funny on the woman. He never rejected the woman. He never brought up the fact that she was a sinner. Are y'all with me here? Never mentioned her sins. He accepted her just the way she was. My question today is, how much do you love Jesus? Can, can, can folks see how much you love him? By what you do. Can, can folks look and say, I know you've been forgiven a lot of mess. And I know God has done a lot for you because I can tell how you act. Are oh, you with me here? I'm almost finished here. It is a sad thing that the Lord has brought some of us from a mighty long way. We, we've been in a real dark place in our lives. And we've become some ingrates. We, we're not thankful to God anymore. We, we won't do the things that we can do for the Lord. Are you with me here? And then if we do something, we do one little thing, we, we think that we got to get paid for it. We, we got to get accolades for it. But I want to know how much do you really love Jesus? 
One thing that we got to do, and you know, I'm not a big uh, a fan of going back into my past because my past is behind me. I'm, I'm pressing forward to the things that's ahead of me, but sometimes you got to look back in your past. And you got to look back where you came from. You got to look at the hole the Lord took you from, and you got to be thankful. And it's got to be thankful that what you do. You, you got to let folks see the loving by how you act sometimes. for you today. But I want to tell you I'm thankful. Amen. You want to know why I do what I do? Because I'm thankful. See, I didn't, I didn't have a little bit of sin. He didn't forgive a little bit of stuff. I had a big list of sin. He, he brought me for a long way. He, he forgave a lot of my stuff. And I'm thankful. And I can't help but to serve him. I can't help but to tell him thank you. I can't help but to live for him. in my bones. Something on the inside that won't let me be still for God. And something that's going to make me continue to work. I, I don't care how much you talk about me. I don't, I don't care what you think of me. But I'm going to work hard for the master that saved me. I'm going to work. I'm going to give all that I got. I have to do it. Because I love it. Thank God for Jesus. Finally, no one ever showed more love than God. Because he gave us his son. Uh -huh. There's no greater love. No greater. Than giving and sacrificing your son. Yes, sir. For a bunch of folk that don't appreciate it. Come on now. A bunch of folk that didn't deserve it. Amen. Thank God for his love. Amen. Surpasses our understanding. We don't deserve it, but he gives it. Amen. That's right. Because he's God. Yes, right. How much do you love? All right. Yes, sir. I want you to think. For yourself. I want you to think about where you was before you got saved. Think about where he brought you from. You, did you forget? Did you, did you remember where you were? You were on the brink of suicide. You, you were headed in a, a real place for destruction and a way that a place that there was no way out. But he delivered you. He lifted you up. How dare you not show him love? How dare you not put your hand to the plow? How dare you? He who is forgiven little loves it. But he who's forgiven a lot should love a lot. And it should be shown in what you do. Are you thankful for what God did for you? Are you thankful for where he brought you from? No one should ever have to tell you to get busy for God. Amen. I shouldn't have to get up and pump you up to do nothing for God. You should be, you should be self-motivated. No, no matter what, because I don't care what you say, I know where I came from. I know where I would be without him. So I'm a servant. That's the way you should feel. Are y'all with me? God bless you, I'm finished. Too many things. I see it all the time. This is great. God been good to you. Real good to you. You were messed up. Come up from the floor. But he looked past your fault. Looking at your knees, he saved you. And you got to be pushed to do something for him. What world is wrong with you? God bless you. Everyone standing. You know, seriously, if you really, really think back where you came from, you, this is personal for you, where God brought you from, you know what, if, if, if I reflect back, well, I, re I, I do it, I, I do it all the time, why do you think I'm motivated, you think I do what I do? But you know what, if, 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 if I had to, if, if I were in a different place, let's say it wasn't the pastor here, 
And if God did what he did for me, well, I'd be the first one here Sunday morning. You hear me? I'd be the first one here with a broom in my hand. I don't care what, don't get, keep the money. I'm thankful. I know what he did for me. Are you with me? I, I'm doing everything. I don't need nothing from you. He already gave it to me. He saved my life. Don't know I need to get pump me up. I know what he did.